Thank you so much for checking out this YouTube video. We're going to be talking about my journey with POTS, so let's get into it. First of all, what the heck even is POTS? It stands for Postural Orthostatic Tachycardia Syndrome, and that means... So if we break it down, first postural. Postural is related to the position of your body. Orthostatic is related to standing upright. Tachycardia means increased heart rate. And syndrome is just a group of symptoms. So basically, any person that stands up, the gravity is going to pull the blood to your lower body. And to ensure that a sufficient amount of blood reaches your brain, the nervous system kicks into gear. So in a healthy person, one response of the nervous system is to send hormones to tighten those blood vessels, and it causes a modest increase in their heart rate. This leads to better blood flow to the heart and brain. So once the brain receives enough blood and oxygen, the nervous system responses settle and go back to normal. In people with POTS, the blood vessels don't respond efficiently to tighten. As a result, the longer you're standing up, the more blood pools into the lower parts of your body, which leads to not enough blood flow to the brain, which can cause symptoms like lightheadedness, brain fog, fatigue, and a slew of other things. The nervous system continues to send these hormones to tighten the blood vessels, which results in the heart rate increasing even further. This can cause shakiness, skipped heartbeats, and chest pain. So that is the medical background of what POTS is, but I will share my journey of how I figured out that this is what I have been struggling with for the last few years and didn't even know. So basically for me, in the summer of 2019, I started experiencing a bunch of different random symptoms that kind of popped out of nowhere. I remember I was visiting New York City with my mom and I just felt very crappy the entire time I was there. I noticed that I was getting, I had like a weird like stiff neck, but also just like bad headaches and nausea and all of these different types of symptoms that just like popped up and didn't really have any reason why. One of the most unique symptoms that I noticed over the coming weeks would be a hot face which I never really experienced before. My face wasn't flushed. It was just really hot after, specifically after eating, and I wasn't sure what that meant. I went to my doctor, told her all the symptoms, and we kind of went down a bunch of different rabbit trails thinking that it could be Lyme disease, so I got tested for that multiple times. I at one point thought it was because I had too much plaque in my teeth, so I went to the dentist a ton and just tried to get rid of that because that was something that popped up in the Lyme test. Of course, you go to the most scary conclusions, so... I just wanted to know what was going on and why all of a sudden these symptoms were popping up. I went to a more naturopath doctor the first time when these symptoms started happening. And like I said, we went down the Lyme disease trail because I do live in New England, so it is pretty prevalent up here. But once I got the blood results from that, I knew that it wasn't Lyme disease. She kind of chalked it up to me having anxiety and which I'm sure I do. Let's be honest, who doesn't <laughs> in this day and age? And so I just knew that my body wouldn't all of a sudden have radical anxiety like that that would cause such havoc on my life. And so I decided to go with a different doctor, told her everything that was going on. And mind you, this is happening all over probably a year and a half of me not feeling good, trying to figure out what's going on. I did try cutting out some foods. And so one thing that I did learn through this is that dairy products really affected me. And that was kind of, I think, what was giving me those hot face symptoms and the headache and stuff. So once I cut out dairy, which was hard to figure out that that's what was causing these symptoms. Once I cut that out, I started to feel a lot better, but there were still some daily struggles that I was having with this condition that I didn't know about. After I would get my period, I would just feel very weak, very fatigued. I felt like my legs weighed like 4,000 pounds and I couldn't get up and do things. So it really was affecting my everyday life. I had to cancel a lot of trips. I had to cancel a lot of like fun things that I was excited about just because I wasn't up 
to doing them. So I go to this new doctor and tell her all of the things that are going on and all of the ways that I tried to get it figured out before, all the while I'm doing a ton of research myself on what this could possibly be that I have. So this new doctor, again, said it was probably anxiety and that's why I was having all of these things, but I just knew like in my heart that it was not that. And so I kept researching on my own, looking at different forums, and finally in probably 2020, I stumbled upon this woman who listed all of these symptoms that were very similar to mine. And she had said that she was going to get tested for SIBO, which is small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. And so I got tested for that. I asked my doctor to give me a referral to get tested for that. So I did, it came back negative, I didn't have it. So I was like, what the heck? Like, this is not good. I still can't figure out what this is. Dealing with my symptoms for probably another six months, I was just getting frustrated again, started researching again after giving up for a little while. I found the same woman from that forum who said that she was getting tested for SIBO. I found her maybe a year after that post, she had posted another one on this forum and said that she was diagnosed with POTS. And so I'm like, okay, let me look up POTS and what's going on. After reading the symptoms of POTS and the side effects of what POTS can do to a body, I knew that this was what was going on with me. I have like fainted in the past and that is like one of the major symptoms of POTS because your heart rate increases so rapidly that you can pass out, you can feel lightheaded and you can pass out. I passed out probably like seven times in my life, so I'm used to it. I <laughs> I just know when I'm going down. And so I knew that maybe that could have something to do with the POTS. And so I did an at-home POTS test, which if you've never done that, it basically is just sticking a heart rate monitor on your finger, laying down for 10 minutes, monitoring where your heart rate's at. So generally when I lay down, my heart rate can get to like 68-ish beats per minute. And so when I stand up, it would get to about 120 and stay there for a while, which that is not normal. It shouldn't get that high, first of all, and then it should decrease pretty quickly after you stand up. But mine was staying there for a couple of minutes. And so I knew that something was off. I decided to, the next time I had a doctor's appointment, just tell her like, hey, I think this is what's going on. We ended up doing a POTS test in her office, but I get super nervous when I'm in doctor's offices. And so my heart rate was at like 90 already just laying down because I was nervous and knew that this was the moment this is when I had to show that this was what I had she like had me lay down for a couple of minutes I stood up and there wasn't a significant change and so she was like I don't think this is what you have And I was like, okay, that's fine. Feeling super frustrated that maybe this wasn't it. I decided to just ask anyway. I emailed her a couple weeks later and said, can I please just have a referral for a doctor that can test this how it's supposed to be tested? And she referred me to a heart doctor who this lady was my (laughs) angel sent from above. I went to her and she did some tests on me. She did an EKG. She said, my heart is fine, which thank goodness, but she did notice it could be related to POTS of why my heart rate was increasing. She did a POTS test on me and it was much better than the one at my doctor. I tried to stay calm and it was definitely more alluding to the fact that I had POTS. This lady was so kind and sat me down and said, I understand that you have been struggling for the last few years and I do see that there is something off though she didn't know exactly what POTS was because at this point a few years ago it wasn't super well known. She said, I'm going to refer you to a guy that actually knows what POTS is. This is something he specializes in. And so three or four, like literally four months later, because I couldn't get an appointment anytime sooner with this guy, I was able to go in. I got the POTS test done and he finally told me that I was diagnosed with POTS. It took me 
three years to get a diagnosis. And so that is my journey. He put me on medication for it. I take Midodrin. I only take it when I feel like I need it, but basically it just constricts my blood vessels so the blood is not flowing like crazy. My heart rate doesn't increase as it would if I wasn't on the medication when I stand up. And it has just made my life so much better. Those times that in the past I wasn't able to get off the couch, now I'm able to do those things that I want to do because someone finally helped me with different practices and medications and all of these things. And so I'm going to do another video in the coming weeks of just my different tips and tricks now that I know I have POTS and what I've done to help me with this diagnosis and it honestly is much more bearable now than it was a few years ago. Just an encouragement, if you feel like something is off in your body, you really do know your body more than a lot of other people. And so I would say do your best to fight for the answers that you need. That was something that I'm so grateful that I did because now I have so much more relief. Find doctors who are going to fight for you as well and want to help you along your journey. But yeah, that is my journey with POTS. It has been a long journey and it's not over yet, but I'm learning how to thrive even with this diagnosis. If you've been diagnosed or you think this is something that you may have, I would love to connect with you. Comment below. I hope that you feel more informed about POTS and more encouraged to hear about someone else's journey. Please don't forget to like and comment on this video and subscribe to my channel to stay updated with the latest Broadway, health, New York City, fun videos. And I'll see you soon.